It's my friend from Latvia. Yeah. Uh, greetings. I like the marble behind you, the column. Uh, it's, a, it's a wood burner. Wow. Yeah. Does that heat your house? It does, yeah. That seems quaint and old school to an English person living in London. It makes me feel that you live in some sort of rustic, magical forest realm. Is that accurate? Mm, it's quite close, but uh, not not really, yeah. That's my imaginings of you, though, Christian. It's maybe because you shampooed my hair, but I feel like you are some sort of poet brewing magical... <laughs> elf. An elf. A legend. My How are you? Are not pointy enough, I guess. They're quite pointy. Are they? Not, <laughs> not on the not for the elf level. Yeah. No, no. You've shaped them. <laughs> sure. But <laughs> How are you, mate? Thanks so much for talking to me. Oh uh, well, I'm good. Yeah. More yeah, that's good. I think it would be nice to talk about your work a little bit, just because. We've never really done that in depth, you and I. Um, but yeah. I'll probably just it's avoid. Business. <laughs> Will you rub my hair? You know, that's the first question I ask. I sorry, it's kind of hard, and, and there's a screen in between us. So. Um, no, sorry. So I don't know if you want to talk about anything particularly, because obviously I'll just edit this so that it's just the things that. Uh, edif edifying not really actually i in a, in a way i've been i had like a little break from writing i in a way still am my 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 latest book came out uh, september beginning of september mm, and i think afterwards I always, I mean, most writers need some kind of break from your work. Um, in a way, it feels a little bit different this time, kind of more like I'm like generally tired of myself, of my writing. But um, that's why I'm jumped into some other possibly projects that will become something. Well, that, uh, sorry, to, to... more out of my usual um, way, text text wise, at least. Yeah. Well, let's jump straight into that because that's an important question for me. Becoming tired of oneself. Could you tell me what you mean by that? Like, you just think you put so much into your last book that you you don't have any energy to to write at the moment. I do write a bit. Uh, but yes, I, I feel that I uh, managed to say what I wanted to say. <laughs> it doesn't mean that that's it or something that drastic, but for the time being, uh, I, I used it all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. Why is it so... I think it's it's a normal process. Uh, you you feel that you're writing the same stuff in a different ways, or you know you're kind of approaching the the same themes. You're maybe I'm definitely a bit tired of myself in the sense that I mean partly thanks to this uh, isolation, you're more forced to be with yourself and your thoughts, and that's not always pleasant. <laughs> Because uh, you're not uh, not necessarily the, the most pleasant person uh, you like to think you are, but not necessarily. And uh, that's uh, I mean, it gets tiring, and you just like, come on. I mean, I have heard this this nonsense before. We should like so find a new ways how to how to work with yourself. I mean, I've, I've used that phrase before a lot when people have asked me why I started to perform, which relates to the collaboration that collaboration that we did, which I, I'm very fond of. Um, 
it's it's exactly that phrase that you used that I used when I was reading in public. I was becoming incredibly tired of myself. It's almost like everything you describe, an oversensitive self-consciousness came together in those public readings. And I found myself looking at a piece of paper with my own writing on it and thinking, what am I doing with my life? So is that something that has happened to you before in writing? Do you think it's to do with actually writing poetry? Uh, certainly, yes. Uh, I think it's poetry. Po poetry is to blame uh, for this. Uh, yeah, I, I guess not so much in readings for me. I mean, there's been very few anyways, but with the, with the text itself, I, I, I look at it from <laughs> many angles and it's just it feels uh, old and, you know, I, I've seen all my tricks, you know, and I'm not surprised by my, my, my text, I guess. And yeah, that's, that, that might be a good, I want to be surprised, but I can't be at the moment. So I need to uh, look for other inspirations and uh, other, other projects. One, one project, which is, um, um, I mean, I'm calling it a project, sounds very official and serious, like there's a finance is involved or like some kind of deadline. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's call it a project. Um, uh, I'm sure you remember Nadia de Vries, the, the poet from Netherlands. Sure. Yeah. And we, we have this project. Uh, it's called a project. I'll take the examples. So we 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 have a, we exchange postcards. Wow! And uh, we give each other a theme, and then you have to write a poem, and then you send the poem. And we give the theme the moment we both have received the postcard. So at the moment, Nadia have received has received my postcard, but I haven't received hers. So when I get it, then we will give each other a new theme and we're gonna write a, a postcard and send it off. So it's, 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 uh, it's just basically a poem. Wow. And it's, uh, it's uh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so beautiful. That's kind of different. So not, to, not only be a theme. Uh, so it's, I don't know, it's, you know, like 10, uh, I, I don't know how many actually, I think around 10, around 10. Uh, so that's interesting because it's a little bit like a task you you do. Uh, I mean, in a way you have to, not necessarily, but this nice, like a little pressure that maybe I need this like little push uh, and uh, I'm writing in English, which is a little bit different, I guess, than writing in Latvian and translating. But but also these um, these uh, events that you have done have pushed me more. You know, you kind of have to uh, write in English or at least adapt to English, and uh, that's also an interesting way how to think about the language, maybe a little bit outside your usual that you know you're very familiar and very familiar with Latvian and uh, so it's nice to kind of look at the language from outside because you as English is not my first language you can look at the words and they are even very like simple common words can you can wander uh, and have like a certain appreciation that native speakers don't because you just use it and uh, and I guess that's something I have lost a little bit in Latvian this kind of wondering about words and the beauty how they sound and that's something uh, I I appreciate now in this little project with Nadia I mean it's not, it's not like it's going anywhere necessarily but it's just a nice um, I mean, it's nice to receive physical postcards, but it's also pleasant this 
to receive a poem. Uh, very it's gorgeous. Original, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm kind of quietly proud that I put you and Nadia in touch to collaborate because it sounds like you've got a real connection collaboratively. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I also translated some of her work in Latvian and published it um, in, a, in a journal here. Uh, so definitely text-wise and also it's, it, it was nice to, to meet uh, her and that some kind of it, it yeah, we have I don't know I feel we have some kind of connection uh, and it's nice to to kind of keep it up because after you know these collaboration ends it's hard to like you know hey what up what are you doing but it's not you can't really it's hard to get back to some kind of doing something together as authors you know and I like that this kind of natural, it happened naturally. It wasn't like, oh, let's do something, you know. Uh, it just Amazing. started slowly to develop and it's, it's been nice. And she's, she, she's a real talent, I think, Nadia, Nadia De Vries. And I think yeah, what's, really, yeah. what's really interesting about her is her first um, poetry book was in English in the UK um, with Dostoevsky Wannabe Press. And it's really brilliant to the point where I, I thought she was English with the Dutch name, but she's since yeah. released her books in Dutch in Holland and they've done really, really well. So it's really interesting that you bring up that relationship to English because her work for someone writing in a second language is unbelievable. Um, and I've asked her about that. I'm interested in that. So I'm quite interested in what you said about that, you know, using English that gives you an appreciation as an outsider. Has it changed your relationship with Latvian? Or, or what is your relationship with the Latvian language? Uh, I think so, yes. I mean, my, it, I guess it's also like, I have to bring up my private life a little bit. Uh, my, my girlfriend, she's, uh, she's British. Uh, oh. and she lives here in Latvia and so we we use English as a, our daily daily language and especially now when when you everyone lives inside in their flats in their little bubbles then and we use English like 99% of the time I guess uh, so that becomes my daily language so I'm uh, in a way, be, even living in Latvia, I'm like <laughs> living in some kind of weird uh, English bubble. Uh, so I, I think there is some, it's not possible to escape some kind of influence on, 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 on the text as well. I'm not entirely sure. Um, there was one, one Russian, Latin Russian poet who did ask about this because he said he feels that there's some kind of maybe some constructions from, from English language being seeps into the, the, the Latvian texts but it, it's hard for me to at least recognize it myself but then there might be some development in that area. And what's your relationship to Russian? Because you're from a part of Latvia that was Russian speaking. Is is that right? Because you do speak Russian, right? And you've translated from Russian. My, my Russian speaking skills are quite terrible, but I uh, I read in Russian and I understand Russian. Um, could have been better because I come from the part of Latvia, which is very Latvian, so basically oh. you study the language at school, but I didn't have a chance to use it uh, when I was like my late teens. And uh, and to be honest, you don't have to use it. Like, like uh, I live in Riga, the capital, and I mean, Latvian is a, a official language, uh, like, there are Russian speakers, obviously, but uh, you don't have to use Russian. 
So that's also you then have to look for the <laughs> look for the situations to use it. Or I recently started to listening some some podcasts uh, in Russian to maybe not not lose my at least my understanding feels I'm I'm shy uh, when it comes to speaking in Russian but uh, if it's not too complex uh, conversation I can understand everything. and is the poetry scene in Latvia kind of split between Latvian speakers and Russian speakers or people who write in both or is it mainly people who write in Latvian the, the, the major, majority is uh, the Latvian speaking poets, but there is a strong, uh, not big, but strong uh, Latin Russian poetry scene as well. And uh, uh, Orbita, you are at least a little bit familiar with them. I think you mentioned some kind of the, the event clan or something. So you have some idea what they do with like more multimedia soundscapes, etc. So that's an interesting project, and it's uh, it's very loved loved here in Latvia. Uh, might be even they might be even more popular amongst Latvian and local Russian public. I might be wrong, but I have this impression they are well received. But there is also other like other like poets poets so to say who who are who publish books and uh, usually if they publish here then there's both languages that, so it's like a russian original text and then they translation in latin right so it's, uh, you can always read one and then compare which is uh, for me at least it, it works uh, well uh, to to check if I did I got it right in the situation. That's amazing. Well, uh, it's impressive how good your English is, but obviously now I know it's because you've got an English girlfriend, so I can't compliment you on it as much as I would have normally because your English is unbelievably good. Yeah, it's not my fault. <laughs> That's funny. So you're collaborating with Nadia. Uh, do you think that collabor collaboration and collaborative practice then is different creatively than the individual projects that you've developed and, and those projects that you have developed, like your books, has it always been for the book, you know, because I know you've been writing for like 19 years. I found out online that you like published your first poems in 2001 or something like that. So you've been writing uh, for a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm an old horse uh, <laughs> in this race. Uh, no, certainly the, the, the collaboration process is, is different and uh, that, that's why when it works, that's why when it works, it's, it's uh, refreshing and you do get out something, something surprising and uh, it's like with our, with our work together, what we did in London, I have fond memories of it because of this this surprising uh, like power like it, it brought and it was not intended at least yeah, well you couldn't predict it exactly uh, but yeah it, it, it has brought uh, something uh, something out uh, from a collaboration that I didn't expect it to get and this this surprise element was definitely uh, important but also inspiring for, for others and it doesn't always work and you know I can't say that all of my collaborations have done or I feel that I have they have worked mm, but it it's hard to say I'm quite uh, demanding of, of myself uh, what I what I like what is what is good what's not so rarely satisfied anyway <laughs> well that's normally the sign of people who make good work if they're dissatisfied with it i think yeah i think you're right exactly what you say that collaboration creates the potential for the unpredictable the magical but also can be catastrophic in terms of its failure in the way that an individual book can't because you constantly revise it 
Although I've definitely made books which are catastrophic failures, but maybe I did that deliberately. <laughs> but yeah, you, you're obviously, I think, a brilliant collaborator. Our collaboration has been talked about quite a lot. <laughs> I was just talking to Inga Pazan the other day on a similar conversation interview, and she talked about it, how striking it was. And it was just the magic of the moment. And obviously that's happened also with you and Nadia. So you seem to obviously be a good collaborator in that regard. So maybe it was something that um, that was dormant in you until these happened. Maybe, yes, yeah. I, I, do, I do miss uh, this aspect, um, like here when, I'm, when I live in Latvia and when nothing really, you know, happens. And it's, I guess that's the feeling now these self-isolation times uh, but it's hard to make this situation to happen uh, you know it feels weird here in Latvia to like I don't know ask a, a fellow poet like let's let's do a collaboration together why we have to, well, firstly because it's uh, not really a thing here but i think more importantly it's this there's no you lack a framework for this like this for example the events you make they they have this well not only history but also like a clear set rules and also like there is a outcome like you know it's a everything is there like the you know you, you meet together, you make something, then you perform. Mm, and to do that here, I would have to make this framework myself, uh, which is obviously not, it's not yeah. something you couldn't do. But then I, yeah, you have to put extra effort into it to, for it to happen. And uh, the, there will be lack of surprise what is with uh, working with someone you don't know like like really sometimes you you meet them hour before physically and that's that is hard to to make it happen here because some of the people you know for you know 15 years and you, it's hard to be surprised by them you know in a way yeah and i think part of it for me which a lot of people don't necessarily perceive is that you know, a big part of the collaborations is deliberately international. You know, you, you correspond yeah. with Nadia in Amsterdam. I correspond with you in Riga. Me and Nadia correspond Amsterdam to London. Like that's part of it for me too, is that people arrive maybe to London or, or Vilnius or, or other places where we've worked together and you feel that that's like my base, but it's not. I'm an alien in that space too. And I'm just trying to create these little moments and that's the context of this conversation, which I should have said before, that we were supposed to be in London creating an event yeah. like before where there would be collaborations between Latvian and British poets, which obviously for, for an obvious unnameable reason we couldn't do, but I still plan to do it next year. So let, let's hope that we can then and um, you can come and collaborate. I'll put you with someone really awful this time, someone really difficult. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, really, I really need that. So, um, so tell me about your last book because I want to talk about your work a little bit because obviously all my experiences of your work have been in translation um, and this last book is in Latvian what's it called and what is it about? Um, my last book is called Skies to Macladbotne it's like the, the presence of beauty in English um, uh, I, it's, it's always hard to, to define uh, things, but um, it is uh, in, in this book, I was, um, I guess more, it was more clear um, for me what I, what I was looking for in the text. And it was this, this kind of small, meaningful, uh, moments that uh, carries like a lot of weight. Uh, 
I, I, I think that's an admirable description because you didn't immediately revert to a theme or an idea. You actually talked about them, the, the technique, the, the aesthetic of the work, which is perhaps how poetry should be. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe that is one of the ways uh, I do. Yeah, the, yeah. I don't know where to start because the, the the book uh, yeah, consists of four parts, and then it's uh, every part is maybe uh, devoted to certain certain subject area, like you know, like I touched themes that are important and I haven't written before, like science or, or history, and uh, and also. In this book, I think I have went going further and further from myself in the sense that in this book there's less of me and more of uh, the world around. Like, you know, I would say my first book was very like me, 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 how I feel about this world. <laughs> but uh, I think it's less and less of of me, like my personal Christian, it's there. It's, 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 it, it goes through me, obviously, the text, but it's, um, and in a way, it's, uh, I, I like it, this kind of development of my text, but also uh, I feel bigger distance from the text, which uh, saddens me. Why does it sadden you? It's it's like when you, well, I don't have kids yet, so I don't know how it is, but you, the feeling that you have, you let something go, and it's you know yours, and like you know, I don't know, like your kid to go to school, or whatever, <laughs> and. Um, but now it feels that it's uh, less, less and less my kid that I'm right. letting to go to school. Um, but we, we are becoming strangers, more and more strangers. It is like we're related, but but I, I don't I don't know you so well. That's this seems be. very natural in England, anyway. That's a perfect relationship to have with your children. You know, <laughs> they go and do their own thing, and you kind of like they phone uh, you once yeah. every three months. Yeah. So. Maybe that's healthy. Yeah, there are know. certain cultural, some cultural barriers. Yeah, we're not able to understand each other here. <laughs> I like that. Like, what do you mean? That's normal. <laughs> yeah, that is normal. What are you saying, Christiana? Are you saying that parents and children are close sometimes? What What are you saying to me? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think about that a lot, what you just said. Um, I speak about it a lot with people because my work is so not personal in the obvious way that I always say it's obviously personal because my name's on it. I mean, I wrote it, so it's obviously personal. I created it, but I don't put the first person I in because I don't want to tell you stories about my life, you know? So the thing you're describing is like my dream. If I, if I finish a book and I don't really feel like I know it anymore, then it gets back to what you were saying before where you're tired of yourself. If I don't know it, then I'm not tired of it, you know, because I get back to it and I'm like, oh, this was interesting. I was exploring this area of language or whatever. So it's really interesting to hear that you feel like you've been on a journey from the the uh, obviously personal to something that feels more objective. Did you notice that as you were writing? Like, is it something you did deliberately or has it just happened to you over the last 10 years? Because I think you published your debut in 2010. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and my second book was um, 2016, yeah, and then now the, the third one, mm, and then was one self-published book in 2015 as well. Uh, mm, I lost the thought, what I wanted to say. I was listening, I mean, to, listening to you carefully and then I was like, okay. okay I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'm just interested yeah. whether it happened to you naturally or whether it happened to you deliberately, because for me, I deliberately stopped myself from putting 
you know, it, the first person I, if I put the I in, I did this, then it's ironized or it's messed with. Like I, I, I literally will do it technically and deliberately, but I know other people like you're describing going through a 10 year writing journey where you start with, this is me as a poet. And then you now 10 years later, you're like, here's some language. These are objective observations as poetry. So it interests me whether that happened to you. Not that, uh, I would say the journey is not so drastic as you describe. I mean, I still, it's not so artificial in the sense. Um, it is still very much uh, my text that, uh, that I can, uh, I can recognize it is, we are related. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's a more gradual process. I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm speculating here, but I think when the older you get, at least to a certain age, you understand that the world is less and less about you. Uh, and, you know, not everything is around, kind of circling around me. And obviously, the ego thing as well, that poets have a strong ego for sure. But you, you realize that it's not. Uh, it's not about you not everything is about you and well and it kind of slowly develops uh, i wouldn't say i i was thinking about it like oh i should put less me inside it, it gradually happened with, with the maybe <laughs> i became more and more bored of myself so i had to bring in other themes to kind of like okay like let's that's a that's I like this thought. Yeah, maybe it's it was already a process. I recognize this boredom of myself. Yeah. Well, I don't want to compliment you because I know you probably hate that, but to me that seems the sign of a great self intelligence to realize oh, increasingly <laughs> that one is boring. <laughs> uh, that's what a certain... feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's how definitely how I feel is like um, without being too deep that that the process of writing is essentially spending time alone confronting one's externalized creations and then in poetry you realize that will not move others in a significant way it might move some but not in a significant way so then you have to confront the fact that you might be doing it for yourself which means in a way you are confronting yourself which means if you're not an arrogant narcissist you realize that you're ridiculous. And if you realize you're ridiculous, then you realize everyone else is. And that seems to me the point of poetry. <laughs> you know, I, I do agree that there's more, like the tone is also becoming more sarcastic, ironic as well. You know, I, you know like you said, taking, taking yourself less seriously. Obviously I do feel a strong attachment but uh, to the text but you know it's it's funny at sometimes how serious especially when you catch yourself being very serious about your own text and you're like oh, come on like <laughs> yeah yeah that's a difficult balance right because if you don't take yourself seriously a bit then you end up really feeling like you're wasting your life entirely more than normal but just really i've had that where i've been like i don't care about that book at all i don't care about this work i don't care about this event and in my heart it's good for me in the moment but then six months later i really have like an empty space where i'm like well if i don't care then why am i doing it but at the same time yeah. if you think you're important and you're writing important stuff when the universe is telling us that we're definitely not as poets i mean oh my god if you're not hearing that scream from the universe no one cares it's 2020 if you're not hearing that then you're deluded so i think finding the middle bit is is the hard is the hard thing you, you certainly have to lie to yourself yeah time to time uh deliberately or not uh, that you know yeah, just finish this one just finish this one it's going to be okay <laughs> I think that's the wonder of poetry is that you can't really lie to yourself in in like an essential way you do a bit as you say like line to line but as a lifestyle overall like if you work in a in a bank or you work you know you can just say to yourself forever this is important i i'm not i'm not meaningless but as a poet you have to constantly confront the fact that yeah. it is it is a bit like 
really? Am I really choosing to do this? I mean, maybe not. Maybe that's just me. I'm projecting. I'm projecting. No, no. I, this is a fam familiar feeling that uh, it, either you are very delusional about, about your importance, uh, but then sooner or later you're going to crash and burn. You know? I mean, someone will tell, like, what, what are you doing? This is, this is completely trash. Or this more, yeah, time to time kind of realizing, like, yeah, no, no, no one cares. So <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, it is okay. I think that's it. It is okay. Um, it's particularly interesting to ask you about that because you obviously do another job, um, which is quite a distinct job, like we were talking about earlier with your brewing. I mean, how do you conceive of poetry next to that? Because that's obviously your business, but it also must be a passion. It must be something creative and it must be something very hands on. Uh, how do you mm -hmm. see like the alterity between being a poet and also being someone who does a job like that? I, I think it helps, uh, helps me in the sense that I am distant from uh, text and literature and it is not that creative. <laughs> uh, it is, it's in a sense, a little bit glorified manual labor. I mean, but uh, it gives me these breaks from uh, firstly being with, with my, myself too much uh, or with my texts and literature as such. I, I am, it's hard for me to imagine the situation that I am actually working as an editor or working in a journal or something. I think if I would be submerged in literature and culture all the time, I would get bored very quickly. I, I do change my, the things I like. Um, I get bored. And I think it helps me to not to overdo it, to have a have a space for, for other stuff. Obviously, when when you're physically very exhausted, it's not the best environment for for poetry, <laughs> uh, especially like editing and something like that. Not not always helps but but I think that the fact that they don't overlay actually is, is a good thing and it helps more than, than doesn't I think it's really healthy yeah I, I feel the same as you and I think that's what I say to people sometimes when they mention my events as creative I don't I don't see them as creative I see them as like professional and social they're just a way of like trying to get some difference because I do kind of work full time, but I don't think teaching is the same as writing and I don't think organizing is the same as writing, but I'm actually super envious of you. I think it's incredibly healthy to have a profession which makes poetry um, in balance as a, as a piece of piece of your existence, which is scaled. It gives you, it must give you perspective, um, especially such a specific one. How did you get into brewing? You just really enjoy alcohol. Um, it's kind of developed uh, gradually. Um, well, I'm by education, I'm a geographer, but uh, started home brewing with my friend, you know, and then just a new thing which is exciting, and uh, and at some point. Uh, it grew into a business and it happened so gradually. It wasn't like, like a deliberate choice. And at some point you are like, you realize that you are, you know, doing everything, which, and then it means you're a brewer, I guess. That kind of situation. <laughs> one day you wake up and you realize you're a brewer. Well, one day when you are, in the middle of the works, uh, work, and we're like, well, yeah, I guess I am. Yeah. That's wise, man. Well, to to poetry, I, but, sorry, 
No, no. You were saying? No, no, I was saying nothing. No, no, I mean, I, I, I wanted to draw lo- parallel lines with poetry that I, I, uh, I still avoid the, the, the name poet, especially in, in Latvian, because it carries like a certain heaviness. And uh, I don't like and when someone says, are you a poet in Latin? And I have this like, oh. and you know, I want to deny it. I don't want to acknowledge it. Uh, but, but it is like, I am. I mean, how else would you, <laughs> how else would you describe it? And it is like you said, you, you wake up one morning and you're like, oh yeah, well, it is. Of the third book, how else would you call this? Yeah, yeah, I feel exactly the same. I think if I if people ask me, the people where I come from in England, working kind of a working class background, if people ask me yeah. what I do, I say a writer or a teacher. I don't say a poet because the weight of it is nineteenth century, almost romantic, or like we were saying Potential. before pretentious self-deluded like oh yeah i'm a poet you know if someone said that to me even though i know loads of poets i'd be like are you though are you really a poet you know come on do me a favor it's because the word itself has been used up right it's been mis misused by a lot of people sure yes yeah yeah. and oh it's it always the association for me is these people who really want to be poets and they call themselves, I'm a poet, I'm a poet. But uh, they usually are terrible. <laughs> and, and then I'm like, maybe that's how I look. You know, and I don't want to. <laughs> so this is the perfect moment to wrap up our conversation. That's not how you look. <laughs> yeah. okay. Let me okay. say on, on video on record recorded video which will be on youtube forever which will which will last longer this video than the human species that's that's definitely Possibly. not how that's definitely not how you look so you definitely yeah. qualify <laughs> all right qualify. mate yeah. it's been so nice to talk with you i hope that we get to meet next year in person certainly Maybe you shave my head next time, or you can shampoo me again. Yeah, well, let's discuss it in email. <laughs> it's not a public uh, public conversation. <laughs> I like that about you. You're private right to the end. I think that's very important. Professional, I, I would like to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're a professional poet. That's you, brother. All yep. right. Thanks for your time, man. It was lovely to yeah. chat with you. Yeah. Same here. Nice to see you, man. Cheers.